hundred percent. Another thing there that that Nullis did, and he and, and it actually really really helped him out there, was he had all of his throwing axe in the town center, which allowed his town center to get bonus damage done without taking any damage. And he's actually caught back up on population here. Dude, not only is he cut back on population, Matthews is stuck back here. With what the forest, forest fire, fire comes back. in? What? Those trolls are stacked, Absolutely. by the way. You see those trolls? They're stacked on top of each other. There's two of them sitting right there. Yeah, yeah, doing damage, but the, the Hursa are here for Nullis. Okay. Anyway, so second iteration here, people. Second iteration of Mega Random. What do we have? We have Matrius, left-hand side, playing Loki with the whole slew of cows. Holy crap. <laughs> Okay, oh, and we have Boyd co-casting with us, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> laughing. He says, can I reverse veto? I know, yeah. In fact, okay, so having said that, we have Loki for Mattress in the left-hand side, and in the red, we have Nullis. We have Nullis going um, Odin. He just used Great Hunt. What did he use it on? All the, the boars? Is that what he used yeah, it on? Yeah, I believe, I believe he used it on the boars, yep. Okay, so we have a whole whopping four starting boars, and how many is that? Ten, eight cows, eight cows and four boars. I don't think Nullis needs to leave his base anytime soon. Yeah, this is both amazing and awful at the same time, because do tell. Well, Odin's advantage in this map comes in two two forms. So one is that he gets the better early game because he's got the extra hunt bonus so he can go and mm -hmm. smash into the loki player nice and early maybe push off hunt and get an early advantage and the other one comes in the shape of ragnarok so while the cows are fantastic for him getting ragnarok it means that the loki player has a really really nice food source to fall back on uh during that early pressure that happens so it's win lose for both players in a way that is okay so that's very true that's very true i agree Having said that, um, since there are so many cows, like if you look at Nullis's base, he has 13 for crying out loud. Let's go check Matrius. Matrius is on 11 himself. So there's two boars and 11 cows. And I know Matrius is just going up to the top side of his hunt as well. Since there's two gold mines though, since there's two, f mm. I mean, Nullis doesn't necessarily see that they're forward gold mines for Matrius, but since there's two gold mines, would We've seen some players um, be successful against Loki by rushing the Loki, aggress the aggressor, so to speak. Mm. Do you think that's ideal with two gold mines, two starting gold mines, and all the cows? Well, well yeah, this is a this is just a really, really fantastic map for defending against rushes. Even with the forward gold mines, just having them in different spots, even if that's a tiny forest there, some good building placement, it's going to be able to defend any sort of uh, any rushes really, really easily. I'd have to, you'd have to expect. Mm -hmm. um, he's also already moved out onto his second hunt, so this is he's probably going to eat all of this and be able to move back home fairly, fairly safely. You'd have to say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Having said that, it looks like Nullis shan't be rushing here. We got a temple back in the base for Nullis. We have a forward temple for uh, Matrus right in front of the hunt. Look at that second patch of deer yes. right there, where Nullis would be going. Yeah, this is this is really really smart, and this is kind of the the difficulty of the Norse War, right? It's like where do you put your temple? Do you put it on your hunt? Do you put it on your opponent's hunt? Do you put it in your base? And we've seen this this game obviously very very different approach from both players. Mm -hmm. Honestly, having said that, there is the there is that huge amount of um, deer hunt up there, but there's also I don't know if you saw there's also an Arox down there for Norse down there on the bottom side next to the gold mine. Yeah, so we, he does have plenty of hunt in the boars. He's got the cows. He could also sneak down there for a little bit of hunt as well. He might not be able to get the deer anytime soon, but there are there's 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 options. There's options. Yeah, I mean, there's there's gonna be there's gonna be another Oroch somewhere on the map for Mattress, but it's not a big deal if he misses out on 400 food by not scouting it, mm -hmm. um, especially with all the cows. I'm interested to see how this one's going to go because we've got Freya, we've got Forseti. Might seem standard, but we've seen a lot of variety in these in these Norse wars. You really never know what anyone's going to do until you see it. Mm -hmm. Well, it's kind of one of the unique matchups in that in that respect. Well, uh, especially since, especially with Loki and Myth Unit spawns, you never quite know how you know battle to battle. You never quite know how they're going to go. So this game could be over, you know, here in just a minute. 
Probably not, <laughs> considering the resources we've been talking about. But you know, you could take yeah. a really bad, a really bad fight, and boom, it's a six-minute game. Or it could turn into a wonder win, like Chemo had last Fimble Winter. <laughs> oh, was that against Chrono JJ or something? Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Leave it to the raw players to you know get a wonder win. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, he also got like a five minute win, so you got to give him a, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, it was a really good series. It was a really good series. I'm I'm thinking this is going to be a really good series too. Both players are up. We got we got Longhouse is right outside of Nolis's gold mine, popping up the wall chips around his towers. I like that. Amazing. Longhouses are up, looking good so far. Yeah, this is wild. The um the troll moving forward for Matrius is a. A risky move, but it's really, really tough to actually deal with a troll as Odin. I think the the only real way you can deal with a troll is if you if the if the opponent miss micros or using your Valkyrie. And we've seen Nullis already sending that forward, and Matrix is already in defense to or has his hearse already in position to defend that. Nice. This is a really, really nice start here for Matrix. I completely agree. Already kicked him off of, uh, already kicked Nolis off of gold. He's got a hearse here that's just about toast. Twerpy giant liker back in there. Throwing Axeman. This is nice. I, I really like that Nolis, or sorry, Matrius goes for Persetti. He doesn't necessarily want to go for the, go for the Heimdall approach since there's the two gold mines. He goes, he goes really aggressive and he goes double longhouse. So his production is going to be. Yeah. Amazing compared to um, compared to Nullis's. Those throwing axemen pop out. Do you remember how much faster the throwing axemen pop out for Loki? Is it like 10% faster? Well, it's going to be 10% sec faster, so 1.6 seconds faster. Mm. Um, Longhouse is already down. He's already kicked Nullis yeah. off that gold mine. This is looking good, man. Yeah, like, Nullis just can't approach because that troll is bonkers. You're all about that troll, huh? He's so strong! <laughs> Where's the Valkyrie? Valkyrie's picked off. Nullis didn't save his Valk, huh? Mm. I mean, Nullis could just get himself watchtowers and he'd actually be... And that'd be enough of a defense to be able to engage. If he kept his longhouses up, I would say yes, he definitely could. He's lost mm. two longhouses, that's 220 wood. He had to re rebuild the longhouses. He's gonna lose a house right now. This is looking great for Matrius. He might not have gone Heimdall, but it's kind of looking like he did. Yeah, he's just all over Nullis, and I mean, Nullis is still getting resources. He's still, he's dropping behind in population and has no real economy, or well, no real resources in the bank, which makes it very worrying. Let's we'll see what he can do. The one thing that is also good about Norse Wars is you never, ever Put a uh, Norse player out of throwing a game, because it's always possible. So <laughs> you got to you got to stay focused. You got to stay focused. Never count the Norse player out. Of course, of course, of course, of course. I mean, I would say, is that is that it? Is that like an inside joke that I'm not that I'm missing? No, no, it's what? just it's just, uh, it's just the reality. <laughs> well, so okay, you, I mean, you're horny for a troll here, man. We got a second troll. Well, there's two now. There's two now, exactly. <laughs> Buckle up, Nullis. <laughs> this is like the throw in action. It got 10% pierce armor. These trolls deal 12 damage, and it's like slow damage. So it's like when the when the uh, projectile hits, I think it takes like two seconds or something for the projectile to hit. So it's dealing like 24 damage a a um or 22 damage a, a throw. Pretty crazy. I don't think that's exactly right. Two seconds? 1.5? I don't know. It's I'm good gonna, damage. I'm going to leave the math to you. Um, I love the math. I'm all about it. <laughs> I can't do it myself, but I'm about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm, all, I'm all about you doing the math as well. Okay. <laughs> Okay, do the math on this. 1,600 gold left over in the ba in that mine for Nullis. And mm. then what? And then what? Well, this is... Well, it's where, where the, the matchup gets interesting, is if Nullis can get to the Heroic Age and can utilize Frost, he can pick off an in basically pick off, pick off an entire army of Matrius. Obviously, you also want to use Frost on flaming weapons, but... 
Do you think that'd be worth it? Sometimes you gotta use it before flaming weapons. Sometimes. Maybe not in this Sometimes. situation, but he's gotta do something. Honestly, Matrix could steal cows right now. That would be huge. There's four cows he could steal. He could even snipe the cow and mm. stop him from fattening. 100%. Another thing there that that Nullis did, and he, and, and he actually really, really helped him out there, was he had all of these drawn axemen in the town center, which allowed his town center to get bonus damage done without taking any damage. And he's actually caught back up on population here. Dude, not only is he caught back on population, Matrix is stuck back here. We what? The forest, forest fire, fire comes back. in? What? Those trolls are stacked, Absolutely. by the way. You see those trolls? They're stacked on top of each other. There's two of them sitting right there. Yeah, yeah, doing damage, but the the Hursa are here for Nullis. Well, he's going to be able to take them all down very, very fast. What did you say about, about throwing games? Holy I don't smokes. know, something about Norse players throwing games. It's the, it's, <laughs> the match is just still fine here. Don't yeah. get it twisted. He's still in a good position. <laughs> What about Poseidon players throwing games? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Everyone throws games. It's, it's... <laughs> Dude, that was huge. That was completely huge for, for Nullis to take that fight. That was so huge. I don't know how many, how many Hursir that Matrius lost right there, but I think now Nullis is ahead in population. He's got a decent number of Hursir um, to handle any type of myth unit spawns. He can maybe push out to the gold mine now, which it, he's not doing, but okay, whatever. This is great for Nolus, man. He was looking super sketchy yeah. early on, but that was huge. That was completely huge. Yeah, there's a couple of things that I think that that Matrius could have been doing to just improve his chances in this game. One thing would have been for this entire time to have been moving his villagers out of his main base and grabbing that gold mine down the bottom or outside of his base. Because now that that's happened, he may have to contend with the fact that he's going to have to deal with the Ragnarok here. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and a good way to deal with a Ragnarok is to have a 3,000 gold mine in your base. Very true. So we'll see if, we'll see if he's, uh, he's going to be able to bring himself back in here. He does get the Heroic Age first, which might be early enough to get some value out of flaming weapons before Frost comes through, but Nalus mm -hmm. is now clicked up to Skadi as well. Oh, Matrus, what's he going to do? Speaking of that, though, speaking of that, Matrus was able to take... Um, his deer spot, plus also Nullis's deer spot that his villagers are just leaving now. So he's had insane food eco uh, throughout this entire game, honestly. Yeah, I guess that gives, I mean, it, it given that the great hunt came down for, for Nullis, it basically equalizes maybe a little bit better for, or more than a little bit better for, for Matrius in the end in terms of total hunt gathered, right? Mm -hmm. But really, really big for him. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This is this is looking really good for him, man. Three longhouse production for Nullis. Two is that two plus two? Two temples, two double battle blood production for Matrius. Okay, okay. Mm. Nullis is this is insane, dude. Even though Braggy just came in, Nullis is still pushing out. Hey, okay, Scotty is in as well. No problemo, I suppose. I will say the one thing that I have learned. From watching this matchup, is that Battle Ball get counted really, really hard by Frost Giants. Oh, the yeah. unit that counters Frost Giants, what do you reckon it is? You tell me, in your Trolls. opinion. <laughs> Especially Trolls. Trolls, man. Yeah, exactly. This is great micro from, uh, from Nullis pulling back here. And he oh. does decide to cast the Frost early. Wild. Heavy throwing Absolutely axemen. wild. Dude, okay, heavy throwing axemen. That's, I think, I'm, okay, I'm speechless. I'm starting to talk here, but I'm speechless. I think this is crazy. Why did he do that? Especially with heavy throwing axemen coming in. Could he not just continue to take that fight and then use frost on flaming weapons? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I think he's scared that his gold is about to run out and he wants some sort of an advantage here, but I just don't understand it. Heavy infantry coming in for Matrius as well. 102 population to 113. Okay. Now I guess, yeah, I guess that Nullis feels like that this Flaming Weapons is just not going to do anything. And he's not wrong. Oh Matrius blunders here. He clicks Flaming Weapons straight away and all of his units die. Yeah. 
I mean, by all means, flaming weapons last for, you know, he's got another 44 or 43 seconds for the flaming weapons, but still. He, he barely has any army that is benefiting from the flaming weapons. Are you kidding me? Mm. Speaking of throwing games, dude, this might be a second, <laughs> the second throw in a row for Matthews. Holy smokes. Game ain't over yet, dude. By all means, game ain't over no, yet. No, it's not like, over. Not over. Never is. Of course not. The battle war spawns could be huge against the against the um, throwing axemen. Like you said, trolls do a pretty decent job countering the frost giants. Yeah. And the, the, yes, yeah, the hardest part about Odin is the and this is what all the Odin players complain about is that the, those Hursa, 4.2 speed, only real myth unit killing unit before you get to the Yarl. Yeah. How do you kill those fast units? How do you kill those range units? Really, yeah. really tough. Oh yeah. Plus, Matru is getting a heavy throwing axeman himself. He can pick off those low Odin Hursir so quickly. Hmm. Yeah, I'm just I'm just surprised he's not spamming out trolls. Um, obviously the the, the that. that's true. I guess the the a... hard part is that Ragnarok is a very, very, very good counter. Two trolls. <laughs> That's all you need to counter troll spam is just Ragnarok. That's it. <laughs> it's gonna come, <laughs> dude. I don't even know if Matt. Post Ragnarok, get the counter to fire giants is yet again trolls. There you go, trolls OP. <laughs> Do not come. Do not come. Dude, Ross real fight coming in here. I don't know if this is a good fight for Matthews, man. He's got it's good battle Battleborn special back there. I guess the Frost Giants are down, but still, this is a weird fight coming in here for Matthews, dude. I feel like he's lost Matthews. one too many fights in this game. Yeah, Matthews just knows he needs to he needs to get some damage done, otherwise come. he's gonna be really, really hurting come, is gonna come, come Balder. But I think he's just forcing it a little bit too much here. Mm -hmm. Well, on top of that, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep my screen here on um, on the fight here, people. But if you look at the mini map, you can see Matrius is out of cows. He has no farms. So here, pretty soon, all of that delicious food that he's been using so far, he's got no more basically. So his economy is gonna be real rough uh, moving forward from here on out. What do you what do you balance? Just like you, we're talking about the troll spam that he needs, but he also needs farms. Uh, throw a market down everyone onto gold buy food if you win if you win here you win the game because the gold the gold mine that Nullis has that's the only one he can get every other gold mine is forward on the map down the bottom side so Matri is just yeah everyone on gold buys food actually builds some some trolls the battle balls <laughs> might work I don't know He's got double temple. If you build enough battle boars, you can probably outspam battle boars compared to frost giants, I suppose. There's potential, I guess. But trolls wouldn't hurt as well, man, that's for sure. Mm. Well, I mean, the game ain't over here. Nullis is on his gold mine, and he's looking like he's pretty close to going mythic. We got the market going up, so we could see Ragnarok here pretty soon. Matrius is forcing, forcing, forcing fights. He keeps losing the fight, so I'm, I'm just not confident that it's actually going to work. But if he forces Nullis to actually continue fighting, 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 he could maybe prevent the, or at least delay the Ragnarok from coming in. Yeah, he has managed to get a little bit of a raid here onto these dwarves, picking off one of those ox carts. Oh, nice. Uh, but, that's nice. yeah, he's just... I just don't think... Yeah, I just don't think these Battle Boar are getting as much value... Well, the, the raiding Battle Boar are. But in yeah. the fight against those strong Axemen, the, it doesn't seem like they're getting as much value as you possibly could. Yeah, I agree. And now we do see Mattress throwing farms down. There we go. And he's got a second town center as well. That gives him a little pop advantage. There is a world here where Matrius defends Ragnarok. <laughs> okay. There is a world here. It, where there is a world. Need... It yes. happens sometimes. <laughs> <Dude>. <laughs> 
the dwarves are getting pulled. The dwarves and the bills are getting pulled. I think this is completely worth it. This is exactly what we saw in Nolus against Scotty in round one. He kept he kept taking fights on his gold mine, on his hunt, um, etc. Bringing in the dwarves and the villagers in order to win fights. And boom, he wins the fight and it clicks up Balder. Just like that. Is this is this world here, Boyt? Do you know. think Matrius is strong enough? It's, it's it's two town centers for Matrius. He has to stay. He has to stay heroic age, and he needs to somehow find a gold mine that Nullis is not going to see. Whether that's the bottom gold mine down there, if we can see that one, potentially there's another gold mine on the map elsewhere. Yeah, there's a couple of black spots on the map where gold is sitting behind. But yeah, Matrius, he needs to find that gold. Otherwise, life's going to be tough. Indeed. He has a lot in the bank. That's something at the very least. There's a lot in the bank. Good Battleboar raid right here. Not quite going to get a ton of kills, but... Okay, never mind, JK. Frostines for the win. The other thing is that Nellis doesn't really need to click Ragnarok here. Yeah. Like, Atreus is trying to force force fights and trying to do stuff, but you don't have to click Ragnarok unless you have to click it. And sometimes Indeed. it's better to not. Indeed. In fact, <laughs> in fact, if he just stayed heroic, I think he might even... He's been winning fight after fight after fight after fight after fight. He might just take this game from Matrix playing a bit too yellow. Yeah. And it's funny, it's funny watching this game because this is such Nullus style. He's an easy defender at heart and he does go for that immediate right on 237 population. Nice. Plus bronze mail coming in. Mm. Matrix does have a gold mine that okay, he's gonna he's gonna resign. <laughs> Not gonna try it. GG. <laughs> Ba -ba. Yeah. It's a good game. That, that yeah. Matrius yoloing into the main base and and Nullis managing to to hold on there was a was just too big. Well, the, I mean, it's one thing that in in any age mythology game, not not just Norse Wars, in any game, like the first battle, the first fight. If you can win the first fight, that really sits you on top um, with the advantage, at least typically. But not only did Nullis win. The, well, I guess technically Nolis lost the first little battle because he got pushed off of that front gold mine. But it was just a small one. It was just a small one. After that, Matrius went a little bit too deep into the backside of Nolis's base, lost a ton of army, and after that, it was just loss after loss after loss after loss after loss. Hit a killer economy. But in fact, I want to look at the KD. I don't know if you're looking at the post game at all. I'll check it out. That's good economy for. Um... I guess both players. I mean, a little bit more gold for Matrius, but. Yeah, Nullis' kill loss is wild here. Very nice, very nice. Especially, you know, when you have a positive, when you have a positive KD, I mean, he should, if he, would, he would have if he didn't use Ragnarok, but anyways, a positive KD against, against Loki, Odin against Loki, that's huge, man. That is huge. Well played, very well played for, uh, very well played for Nullis. Nicely done. Great first win. It's the best of three, right? Best of three, yeah. Ooh. Okay. So, good prediction, boy. Good prediction. We actually do have a little switch ruski on the gods. We actually have Nullis coming in, in the blue this time, playing Loki. Matrius is sticking mm. with the Loki, but we got Loki v Loki here on Savannah. Interesting. I guess the map pick maybe had something to do with that for Nullis? I, I, you'd have to assume so, though. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Like, this map is so weird. There's so many different iterations of this map. It makes it yeah. really, really tough to know which god is actually good here because you can get, like, four Rhino. You can get no starting... Or you're always going to have starting hunt, but it's going to be... Um, somewhere around your base some of the time you can also get like a ton of giraffes so in this specific situation where there's not a whole lot of hunt it might have been better to go odin here just so you get that that great hunt you can push off your opponent's giraffe take the whole map for yourself but so you think like the variety is what we see well like the because there's such variety 
it's maybe safer to go Odin because when if there is like a little bit of hunt or and and you need to use great hunt on goats or is that kind of what you're saying the great hunt yeah i think with the, the exception variety? with the exception of the four rhino spawn yeah i think that i think that odin is going to be out i guess and some no, every single savannah has got forward hunt so um yeah i think that you're just better off with the better off going odin here i'm surprised to see nullis moving away from it Maybe well I'm I don't I'm know, not the man. Norse expert. <laughs> That's the thing. I I am, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Problem aside from like hunt, aside from hunt, um, the gold mine placement is. That's always my concern on um, on Savannah, is the gold mine placement. Not necessarily your starting gold mine, but your gold mines outside of your base. Yeah. 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 So yeah, it's in, like always, it's always going to be forward. You never, I mean, this map's got a fairly decent couple of side gold mines, which you can move back and forth from mm -hmm. um, if you're needing to do some sneakiness. Mm -hmm. but yeah, it's always going to be a tough one to get that second gold mine going. You have to keep that in the back of your mind. Yeah, for sure. Also, having said that, um, you know, even Odin can, I'm thinking of Heimdall rushes or even not Heimdall rushes, like that could be a problem against Forseti as well. But even so, you know, with Odin, mm. if you do have Heimdall as well to potentially face against a Heimdall rush, you don't quite have the myth unit spawns, but still, that's what I'm thinking about when I'm, you know, when I'm playing a Norse mirror on on this map, gold mines. Yeah. Well, at least, well, one thing that Nullis has done well, to move on from the gold mines and talk a little bit about the build order is he hadn't found his zebra. What he's done nicely is he split up his villages so that he's gathering with some villages on the back to zebra and sending the rest of his villages forward to the nice. four giraffe which is gonna allow him to consistently get that food unlike matrius who found his giraffe super early and didn't have to do any real adap adaptation there um which does allow matrius the early advantage here but knowledge should be okay and he's advancing later, which we can talk about a little bit. The differences in, in resources from advancing later do end up counting because you get an extra villager out every, say, 14 seconds. You advance later, you get an extra villager out a minute earlier, which is a minute of gather time. So Nullis goes later with what looks to be 16 villagers, 15 villagers, 16 villagers, 16. and yeah. Matrius is 14. So that's like almost a, that is a, that is a hearser in terms of resources that Nellis should be in front. So Mattress has to get some damage done. Well, I mean, indeed. I, I mean, I agree with you that, but it, I agree with you, but Nolis, since Nolis's giraffes are so far forward, I think this potentially is going to hurt. Although if Mattress, it doesn't seem like Mattress knows where the giraffes of Nolis is. He doesn't see the temple forward. He doesn't see the, the giraffes up there. So... I yeah. would be concerned about the Hersier getting, like being classical age Hersier before my, like, well, I have archaic Hersier as the Null, as Nullis here, mm. but it seems like it's not going to be a problem. He's just going to build up over on this side with this hunt and no problem. He can, it's fine if Matrus hits a sentry tower, it's fine, even though he's, you know, he's getting the favor income, but still, I'd rather have that as a distraction while I build up, you know, while I age up and get a longhouse going on, on my hunt. Yeah, hundred percent. This is like best case scenario for uh for Nellis here is yeah he gets to the next stage he has the villagers out the later advance he's gonna be behind population ever so slightly because he's got the longhouse coming down later mm -hmm. but it shouldn't end up mattering too much he should be able to catch up we'll see we'll see we'll see we'll see okay the longhouse is up but i mean he's still down on pops it's not too bad though it's not too bad 39 to 44 not too shabby i think he can stay alive i like how both these guys use the uh spy on both of hers here yeah this is fantastic it's 100 percent the best way to use your spy in any matchup where a, a civilization wants to go for raids a lot of people default to using spy on say like a gold villager or something so you know where the gold mine is or a hunt villager so you know where the hunt is but in actuality defending yourself is the better call 
and putting your spy on the Ursa. Fantastic idea. Mm -hmm. Ooh, fantastic micro. The garrison micro. Sick. Blech. I don't like that healing spring placement. I don't think healing spring makes a big difference uh, usually, but if you have it, you might as well use it well. I'm, I'm not a big fan since it's so far away from his from his actual military buildings. That's a weird place to put yeah. it, in my opinion. It's, it is a strange one. I'm not sure. Maybe it affects the farms that go around his town center as well. That's oh, yeah, that true. Maybe I don't know. It might be fine. You might. What do you, uh, Loki making farms around his town center? I don't. I don't under. I don't understand. It doesn't happen. Oh, I've been playing Loki wrong this whole time. No wonder. <laughs> <laughs> Loki macro, baby. Loki macro. <laughs> you see a nice little raid coming through from Atreus. No, this is defended nicely. Uh, it does look like both players have got their whole things through. So. No mm -hmm. advantage to come here, and I hate to say it, but this game is looking more and more like it's going into that coin flippy thing that happens with the Loki mirror, where if you get an iron here spawn, you, you're you happy. If you don't, kind of unhappy. Mm -hmm. but, oh, great snipe from Mattress, and he gets out. Nice. And he can heal that back up with the healing spring. Fantastic. Ooh. Oh, yep, he's out. Another little skirmish on the left-hand side. A little mini micro, or mini micro, mini mini raid going on, a micro raid going on. At least he's trying to get something. There's your iron spawn yeah. if you saw it. Uh, you hate to see it though, when it's not in the in the fight. It's like now you got a three-speed myth unit that's taken up population. You'd have loved to have had that spawn in that fight before, but you got to take what you get. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like this group up right here. Maybe can take it. No, decide not to take a fight there. Okay. It's always dangerous running through your opponent's base with her, sir. If he's, if he's set up any decent base, you can get yourself caught out with building placement and, and, and stuff like that. But luckily, <laughs> Matrix hasn't really set his base up in that fashion just yet. So, Alice gets through, no worries. You mean kind of like game one? <laughs> Well, I, I wasn't... Yes, yes. <laughs> kind, of, kind of, like game one. <laughs> That's exactly what I mean. <laughs> it would have been, the shoe would have been on the other foot, however. It would have been Nullis getting stuck in uh, Mattress' base in that True. instance. True. It's she a different story when you have Hall of Thanes, though. True. Speedy, speedy boys go speedy. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, we see the armory up for Nullis. He's he's not anywhere near resource wise to actually ooh to actually age up, but I guess he's thinking about it. A little raid here onto the onto the Matrius dwarves with micro keeping everything alive, but the uh, Sarah targeting down here is a uh, myth units at the moment. Nice. It's nice to pick off one though. And those here uh, those uh, myth units can just heal back up on the healing spring. Okay. I don't know what's happening here. But Matri's score is 600 Whoa. in front of uh, resources of Nullis. His score, 700 in front. Oh, I know. Is it because of his resources in the bank? Yeah, I mean, he's just about ready to click up. Yeah, I guess so. But it's just like must be Matrius is just gathering more stuff. As uh, I guess so. It's because of the Ein Same mm -hmm. village accounts. Same village account, though. Yeah, I've got to be the Iron Eyes board. <laughs> this bit, it feels like this has been a very cautious game so far. Nobody wants to... We haven't seen any big cataclysmic <laughs> fights just yet. Yeah. I, I actually really, really like the style that... that um, I guess Matrius is kind of forcing the style, but it's like splitting the army up, getting as many little chip damages as you can, uh -huh. um and you can actually see i think the difference here is that 40 30 favor in the bank for each player and that's because matrius has been setting the tone he's been getting the small amounts of chip damage onto buildings yeah and what i like about it is that he's not forcing a fight which is playing into that coin flip thing we were talking about before he's taking yeah. the game into his own hands and finding advantages and nullis is definitely definitely behind here to some degree 
I think he is. In fact, two things real quick. Broggy's coming in. Well, three things. Broggy's coming in for both players right now. You see how Nolan has to go all the way back to his main town center to heal up his hearse here? That's awkward. I mean, that means Matrius could jump into that base, start taking down houses, you know, maybe take out that temple, for example. That's awkward. But also... Oh, yeah. Like, Oh, okay. Both players are getting copper mail. That's what I was going to mention. Both players getting copper mail, jumping into heroic age. That's typically pretty important to get, especially in a mirror matchup like this. Yeah, the copper mail is probably the best upgrade in the game in um, for, for a Norse war. And then maybe even bronze mail. You have to decide between getting bronze mail and getting copper weapons. Mm -hmm. Fine. Anyway, Dude. getting all three of those upgrades is really, really important. And look at that from Matt. He just gets in four building kills, four yeah. houses going down, and he just gets out. Great play from Matrius. He needs to take advantage of it, though. He runs away. He's got bronze mail coming in. I wonder if we're going to see a big fight after bronze mail comes in. It's halfway there in for Matrius. You were just talking about it. That will be an, uh, an advantage yep. for Matrius. Yeah, and he's gonna he's gonna take this fight a little bit early, but there both players flaming weapons, bronze mail coming in. Nullis is not gonna realize that this is happening, and this is gonna be advantage Matrius most likely here. But you just don't know what's gonna happen. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And the coin has been flipped. Here we go. What are we gonna get? Mine spawn, mountain giant spawn, troll spawn. Take it easy, boy. I know you love the troll spawns. <laughs> Trolls are great. <laughs> Trolls are great. Guy's a little. That guy's gone though, dude. Myth unit. I don't even know what's happening in this fight. Who's? It seems like Matrus is taking this fight, but yeah, it's a close one. Yes, it's a close one, but he's got it. And okay, Matrus just <laughs> clears up. I mean, there dessert makes perfect sense. Like he had bronze mail. He should win that fight. It, that was really close, though. I mean, if you look at the actual Hersir numbers that are remaining, like there's myth units. It's it's more of the myth unit difference in the numbers, whereas there's, yep. I mean, there's what, three additional Hersir, um in for Matrius compared to Nullis. I mean, there's, I guess there's another guy coming out right there. I don't know if this game was necessarily over. Oh, we both missed. Oh, I don't know. Raiding. If, yeah. The raid. Very yeah. nice. Okay. Yeah, the raid, the, the raid under those dwarves just says, okay, no gold for you, game over. <laughs> but by all means, also, like, there's a Matrius... market up for Matrius. Is, 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 okay. Okay. So he's going to be able to buy, he's going to be able to buy food if he wants to. Actually, whatever. big difference here. Um, farm's already down for Nolus, whereas Matrius is still on his goats. So I'm not sure how many goats that Matrius had compared to Nolus, but... Not having to spend resources in villager time, getting wood, spamming the farms, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Big difference there. Big difference. Uh, and it does look like Nullis missed his deer in this game, whereas I think Matrius ate them at some point. Yeah, those those wood choppers on the top side for Matrius, they took the deer, um, they took his deer and then swapped over the wood. Yeah. Really, really, really clean game here from Mattress. He was in the driver's seat for the whole time. He did get that early game advantage having the giraffe, and he took full advantage from having that initiative from it. Well, I think Nolas... Is that leveled? I mean, huh? Is that leveled the series now? One to one? We have game three? One to one. We got game how this three, works? baby. That's, yeah. <laughs> that is how this works, yes. <laughs> We're right. As <laughs> one can see, we can see a loading screen, and... We have the Thors. The Thor War, baby. Very nice. I think I agree with this. Thor for Nolas in the blue, left-hand side. Thor for Matrius, red, right-hand side. I don't know, man. I've, I've always said, me as a Norse player, I've always said that I really don't have a preference between playing Thor or Odin, except for water maps, particularly Mediterranean. Even on Anatolia and Midgard, I'm, I'm fine with either Thor or Odin. I don't necessarily have a big preference, but on Mediterranean, definitely, um, definitely yeah. pick Thor here. Yeah, I don't like Odin on Mediterranean either. I'm more of a fan of, of Odin on Midgard and Anatolia, because you get Njord, Njord's really mm. fun. Mm. Um, but on Mediterranean, you just get nothing from like Forest Fire, you get nothing from Heimdall uh, from Undermine, and it just feels really, really crummy with your slow ships. At least with 
for, and we'll see if this is the case in this game. I'm not 100% sure. It's my preference to go for four city here. Mm hmm. Because you get access to the healing spring, which you can use to heal your ships while playing defensively. It's really, really strong. Well, I mean, by all means, you can. I guess there is one thing. You can, with Heimdall, you can do some fun little cheese. Um, the 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 healing spring to heal up your ships is probably to, it's probably the safe and I don't know I don't know if it's the better way to go but it's definitely the safer way to go but you can go Heimdall and do some kind of funny little rushing business some cheesy business on your opponent's forward docks maybe mess around with the you know their economy something like that there are options mm -hmm. with 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 Heimdall do you remember the old vanilla player Grand Monster yeah. Yeah, Grand Monster yeah, and play. Talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Both, well, both of those guys, Grand Monster and Talk, they liked to do, liked to do a lot of, a lot of fun little Heimdall. I wouldn't necessarily call it cheese, but it is kind of cheesy what they would do with some kind of faking aggression and whatnot. So there are options with both uh, Loki and Loki Nolan uh, with Heimdall. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, here's the thing. I think that if Mediterranean had a consistent hunt spawn on its map it would open up those sorts of aggressive strategies so much more i'm talking like a thousand food hunt spawn oh, like wow. just one extra one just that much and then you're going to be able to do things like there's this four 402 um advanced time with odin that's really really strong i do it on um like tundra pools for example one dock four fishing ships advanced build fishing ships afterwards uh, and you can Heimdall rush the shit out of your opponent and get a quick win. But you can't do it on this map because it's just the hunt is not there. So, yeah, it'd be nice if you just had that little bit, little bit extra. Okay, I mean, fair. Fair. I don't know, I guess it would open up options. We're, I mean, we're talking about, yeah. we were just talking about variety in games, so it would open up options. I think it'd be fun. I think it would open up options. It would, in, in more standard games, aside from opening up strategic options, it would, if you lose water early, if you lose yep. water early on, you can still survive by a quick swap over to that food. If you don't use it early, that uh, that that gives... Yeah, 100%. It's, it's got multiple factors in it, and yeah, it yeah. would be a really, really nice... Uh... This is a nice little quality of life for this map to give it a little spice. Oh, both players going Freya. I'm surprised. I'm surprised to see both players going Freya here. They've obviously <laughs> played this matchup a little bit. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but they did something really interesting in the early game. Now, they actually used only one dwarf at some point. I didn't notice when. They only put one dwarf on that dwarven gold mine. Everyone else kind of went on wood early. Mm -hmm. um, an interesting build order adapt adaption. I'll have to go back and watch the record again and see exactly what happened. Well, I can say both of them have nine, nine uh, fishing ships for Matrius. Uh, Nolan says these extra two out here um, for 11 total. I've never seen more variety in a Thor Mediterranean build order than this past week. Both of these guys, I've been play I've been doing Thor build orders for so long, and they're they're both advancing quite a bit later than I typically would on Mediterranean. But they have, you know, pretty killer economies. Nulse is going to have a third dock here in just a minute. Anyways, we thought saw it with Shadowfax. Um, Shadowfax doing kind of a fun little Thor build order. Um, where, anyways, we won't get into it right now because of. Uh, right. We got Matthews dropping an armor in, getting the copper shields upgrade. At the beginning, of I love this. Are you kidding me? Oh. I love this. I love this, but it's it's actually not. It's it's good because Nullus hasn't got his dock up because he went those extra two fishing ships. That's why it's good. If if Matrius, Matrius, if Nullus had gone three docks, he would be in front. He'd just be straight in front on arrow ships right now and be winning. I don't know if this is a decision that Matrius made because he saw something, but this is really, really interesting. I like it, man. I like it a lot. I don't know if it's going to... I mean, it's you have the resources early on in order to do that, but I wonder how that's going to impact his production overall. Yeah, it'll, I, I, and also, it, it, it's interesting as to when we see the forest fire coming down. Ooh, village are going down. 
not quite. When Nullis will realize exactly what's going on here. Why am I uh, losing? Why am I losing the fights? Well, the reason I mention um, his production is because usually uh, Pierce Armor is good, but by all means, in Asian mythology, usually it's the numbers um, that that you want to get first. So yep. if Nullis, I mean, it's it's nice to have, like for example, players like doing. It's it's kind of it's a bit cheesy, but you know, sometimes in team games, random team games, you'll see early burning pitch um, from <laughs> from the Thor players on Mediterranean and another forest fire coming in anyways it's it's fun but if you if you don't have enough numbers it's still you're still going to lose on water it'll be interesting to see numbers wise and micro ultimately what's actually going to happen on water here yeah if you can spend all of your resources consistently and there's nothing banked up basically once you have 10 archer ships that's roughly when it's worthwhile cutting a archer ship to get your pierce armor Mm. Roughly, ten. maybe maybe one extra, yeah, ten. Um, so you have to build your armory as well, which yeah. doesn't really account for the math. Well, we know yeah. Boyd; he's all about the math. Whether I do it right or not, I don't know. <laughs> having okay, so having said all that, you, I mean, you you mentioned the ten fishing or ten longboat number. He's up at twelve. Matrius is up at twelve, so he surpassed that. Nullis is on three dots, however. So you can't necessarily spam from three docks consistently just yet, but Matrice only has the two docks for now. So here, here in just a minute, these numbers are going to start paying off, but Copper Shield's also going to start paying off bigger, you know, more and more as well. And Matrice now getting himself weapons upgrade. For weapons. This is, this is, oh, I'm, I, I'm digging it. I love it. I love it. Upper weapons. He doesn't need a micro. Shield. Don't, you don't. Norse ships are so slow. Don't pull back micro with Norse. Just focus fire. They so they do so much more damage than everything else. Every other ship. Not, uh, it is equal here, but in terms of speed. But you just don't need a micro with with. Don't need to pull back micro. It's all about the focus fire micro with Norse. Especially when you have the stats advantage. Yeah. Ooh. It's really paying off here. I'm not sure what the. Uh... It's hard to tell who's had the better micro here or or has the copper shields actually paid off that much for Matrius here. It's a little bit hard to tell, but I think for sure there's no way Nolus expects that there's two armory upgrades already in for Matrius here. He can almost afford he can almost afford bronze uh, shields if he wants to. Yeah, and now the answer, the next move here for Matrius should basically be he cuts all of the archer ship production. He needs to throw it down another dock, but just drop it down center. Alternatively, there could be a gold star possibility, but just drop a town center is the safest way to play moving forward, and then he just comes in with an advantage, an arguably insurmountable advantage. Mm -hmm. I like that he's at least getting a third dock up on the top side of the lake. He's also got a hearse here headed out on the bottom side, so we could maybe see... Uh, maybe see some more dock play, make sure he doesn't lose water, and... Okay, that's actually a fourth dock going up in... Interesting. I, I might even like this better. Idea being... There's the docks TC, on both way. sides... Yeah, there's the TC, right. But both docks on both sides allow you to get even more fishing ships out. Like efficient fishing ships out. Mm -hmm. And then you can go for that gold stuff, but... Double Valkyrie out for... For Nullis now. Mattress oh needs God. to... Needs to figure this out. Bronze weapons going through for Bronze Matrius weapons. as well. Yeah. <laughs> Is this too much? Is this too much? Well, look at the numbers difference, man. Nolus now has like yeah. double the number of ships. He doesn't have the town center coming in. He only has three docks compared to the one, two, three, four, four soon for Matrius, but Valkyrie yeah, but this puts is really nice. You just, you just sack the water here. And you just go all in on gold staff, and there's... I don't know if Nullis would be able to defend that. Town... Th like, three town... two town centers. The Valkyrie's getting some good damage done, but a Hursa in defense. I think TC play would be... would be too slow. I think it's a little bit too slow. It is 10 minutes into the game, I suppose. 10 minutes is... It. Cut the town center? What? He cut he his town center. the TC. Probably to start producing again on water. Yeah. There you go. Wow. 
Like, if you take a look at the map, there are gold mines on both sides, but you can fairly easily just run across both if you make, I don't know, full raiding cavalry or wolf sucks or something. Sure. I guess I Magic is building uh, longboats now into his docks or something? Yeah, he is, he is, he is. Oh yeah, you can't see that, right? Mm -hmm. I think this might have been a little bit too greedy for Matrus going for the four docks in the in the town center. I think that might have been a little bit too greedy. Four docks, town center, bronze weapons. If he went, if he went, if he went, if he went heroic age behind this and just now he has, I don't know, dragon ships or has frost giants. Full land is completely viable. Nullis, Nullis does not have any upgrades coming in, man, so bronze weapons. Does bronze weapons impact? Yeah, it, it impacts the dock fire. Yeah. It impacts yeah. the dock fire. Insane. Oh my god. If you're behind, get your weapons upgrades. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, now Nullis gets a town center up. He's going to get that safe gold mine behind it. Nice. He already has a longhouse, three longhouses up, plus an armory. I really like that for Nullis. I really yeah. like that for Nullis. He's already, I mean, you're talking about going land, going gold starves, things like that. I'm all, <coughs> excuse me, I'm all for it. Um, I'm all for it, and I don't know if Nullis is really primed to do so just yet. It's going to take him a long time to actually get a gold starve going, but still, I like the move. What's the big question is? Oh, Matrius is just spammed out a ton of Valkyries here, kind of sunk his food. He had like 800 food, 1000 food there. He just sunk that all into Valkyries. Nice, he's just gonna get any value from those. Egg sticker coming in, copper shields coming in for Nolas, Aurora Borealis. Pop quiz What? What's what upgrade is Aurora Borealis? Valkyrie upgrade, my friend. Attaboy. <laughs> Attaboy. Uh, <laughs> there's one thing I know. It's uh, stupid facts about age mythology. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're talking about the gold star, man. Nullis is starting to throw or to hit that wall over on the right side for by Matrius's gold mine, man. The water yep. play starting to kind of not, maybe not matter quite as much compared to compared to the gold control. Yeah, now yeah, Nullis is doing kind of exactly what I thought Matrius should have done before, which is, I mean, I think maybe Nullis is still building some some He's, longboats here, but... Yep, yep, he is, he is, he is, he is. This is going to hurt raid. Matrius so much. But so too, yeah, you're absolutely right. The Valkyrie's coming in. Nullis is also getting severely injured. <laughs> oh, dude, dude, look at that. Look at that. Plus the gold. Where else is he going to get gold? Aside from right here, if he loses this little spot, he's toast. Yeah, he's gonna have a. He's gonna be. He's gonna be in for it. Madrius can move forward and shank those dwarves. They're a little bit stronger than normal. Extra ten HP. Uh -huh. Get in and shank and help out, especially against the thrown axemen. They've got a little bit lower base. Uh, base damage than most other ranged units. Got the butter knives, baby. That's right. My okay. Valkyries are just fighting each other underneath the uh, town center there. This game just flip-flopped so hard. Now Matrus. Matrus, like I said, I think he went a little bit too greedy um, going for the TC and the docks and all the fishing ships. He allowed Nolus mm. to come back on water. Um, now it's actually Nolus with the second town center, the aggression on the water and land. Now Nolus is looking good, man. Can you see the villager numbers? I, don't, I can't remember what. Yeah, you can yeah, see. yeah, yeah. Six, 60 villagers for Nullis okay, yeah. is. I mean, it's still 15 fishing ships for Matrius, but he's getting pushed off of that. Yeah, right. And I guess because Nullis has got two town centers, he can both fight on the land and fight on the water, whereas mm -hmm. Matrius cannot. Mm hmm. Well, he's <laughs> he's trying. That's for sure. He's definitely trying. Yeah. It, it, it would almost. This is one of those rare moments where it would almost be a in in uh, Nullis's best interest to actually get Burning Pitch because he's going to be able to clean up all the docks really fast with it. But sure. Ma Matrius is going braggy. 
Yeah. He's up through Froggy, baby. I've... What is that going to do for him, though? What is that going to do for him? I don't know. He's just got nothing but Valkyrie. <laughs> Flaming weapons, for those of you who don't know, it only affects human units. It does yeah. not affect myth units. Yeah, yeah. So... I like the cojones, but... Jeepers. The Jeepers Creepers. He is building some forward buildings there, if you can see. He's building some forward buildings. He can get some human units out if he does want. It also... Bur uh, Flame and Weapons also impacts um, ships. Wait. I'm suddenly questioning myself. It does, right? Yes, it does. It, it affects ships. Yeah. Let's see. It there was a bug. Uh, history lesson. What was the bug that Flaming Weapons used to affect? Oh, oh, in the ships, made the make, made the unit ridiculous. I can't remember. The hammer ship. Though. Ah, really? Yeah. Well, here we go. Here's flaming weapons, and it's affecting one hersier right now, <laughs> and one hersier, <laughs> and he is dead. <laughs> Imagine Frost here. Imagine Frost here. All those villages frosted, town center down, gold starve initiated, though. We don't see any attempt for Madras to get on the bottom side of the map. Oh. Dude, oh, Nullis is in a classic this? Norse problem. Stuck in the classical age with three, nearly 3,000 resources in their bank, but zero food. <laughs> I've never done that. Yeah, you've never done it. You would never. You'd never fall in that. Never, never fall in that. Uh, <laughs> <That is problem. laughs> which is which is oh dude what is happening does he have a look at his dock down now that he's kind of survived this flaming weapons push which you know funny enough doesn't impact all the valkyries but look at his fishing ships down on the bottom side is that a fish bug what is happening here did he just auto queue fishing ships and they're sitting around his dock i don't i don't see it uh um, no one's no one's is uh, oh. kind of left side oh of oh he's done a he's done a me no, he's <laughs> don't do it. He's done of me. He's clicked, he's clicked auto queue on fishing ships. He's oh, probably no. got a whole bunch of idle villages all over the place. Oh yeah. no, poor thing. Nadra's going Balder though. <laughs> but Scotty coming through. Balder. I almost think that I almost think that Fimble Winter here would be a, a, a rare better play. Very rarely is Fimble Winter better than Balder in the Norse mirror, but. Here you get the Yormandelva out, which you clean up the entire water. You hit the economy of Nullis, and all the gold is on the bottom side. So you just need to rotate around there. You can find well, a win. The big problem, though, is that the I I agree I I agree I agree, but I'm skeptical because the you no know, does not see the base of Nullis. But if you look at Nullis, remember the the Fimble Winter Wolves? They spawn around TCs. So there is a mm. little bit of eco damage that you could actually do. But most of Nullis's economy is away from town centers it's on water it's on gold mines you know it's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. away from tcs no i guess I, the other thing is you don't have to click you never have to click ragnarok you don't have to yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the frost goes down not a whole lot of units here for Nellis, so this actually isn't that bad normally when frost comes down you kind of lose your entire army but it's not so much here for Nellis. So, yeah. Mattress shouldn't lose all too much and should be able to retreat away, no problems. The problem for Mattress is he's still not on three town centers and Nullis is going to be three town centers very, very shortly. Well, I don't but think Mattress he's worried about town centers. Exactly, he's not worried about town centers right now. He's worried about destroying the town centers, rather. But Nullis. I wonder if Nullis is kicking himself, like, oh shit, maybe I should have saved the frost. He still hasn't noticed the fishing ships. He's got 14 there. Take three. Oh, dude. Three, oh, three dude. fishing. <laughs> He's a kind of, yeah, he has 25 fishing ships. Wow, it's surprising he can't get mythic. You know, you'd think you'd have a lot of food with 26 fishing ships. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if, I mean, part of me feels like it would be in his best interest to actually use all of those rather than just delete them at this point. <laughs> For the pop. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, oh, he noticed him. He just noticed him. He just noticed him. Oh, my God. Look oh, at that. Set them go. Look at that, look at that. Fortified TCs is coming in on that main TC and it's gonna be prevented from Matrus taking the TC down. Oh, and he stopped the third down center as well. Oh and Noah steps down. Wow. Oh. 
That is a that is like yaller horn getting blown right there. I can't believe Nullis actually pulled it off. Or sorry, Matrius actually pulled it off. He was looking so weird and uncomfortable after he let Nullis come back on water. I think that I think that, that fishing ship play, that fishing ship blunder, that might have kind of cost I, Nullis the game. Yeah, I reckon Nullis looked at that, got tilted, and said, I'm out. Yeah. Because <laughs> let, let's like blunder. let's be real. Yes, he's not he's not going. He's not going um, Mythic Age yeah. anytime soon. So what can he realistically do here? Yeah. Spam throwing Axeman? Yes. I don't know how he's going to be able to kill off anything else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he, if he had, if he, if he maybe had a, um, like on, on this top side, his Longhouse is going to get, are going to get yes. cleaned up, right? If he had another little side build down on the bottom side where he could actually get population going okay sure maybe maybe he could continue fighting maybe maybe but all of his buildings are going to go down he doesn't have any land army his town centers are down you know he's got a, a bitch and fishy go but <laughs> that only goes so far honestly against ragnarok then be the breaks sometimes everyone it's just it's wild watching these guys play because it's I mean, Madrius is probably more of the Norse player now as he's been playing a lot of Loki recently and he's kind of mm -hmm. gotten in tune with the Norse, so to speak. But it's interesting watching players who basically play near perfect with their, with like like Nullis playing near perfect with Hades coming in and just making, and both players kind of making a whole bunch of misplays in these games and then them having to react and deal with the misplays and kind of in a way that you wouldn't normally get to see them having to having to do it and you just like it, it shows how good they are that, that they see that they, they see they made a mistake and they make up for it in a different way and all this other crazy stuff hmm yeah i agree so plus well plus on top of that in when you know for example nolis both of these guys are greek players historically um, you know, Nullis, mm. Nullis, the big Hades player right now. We we all know Matrius, the Poseidon player, although he's kind of moved around to different gods since, you know, really focusing on Poseidon. Anyways, um, you know, with, with Poseidon and especially Hades, it seems like mistakes can be sort of mitigated with god powers, with just the strength of Greek god powers and whatnot. So it's, it's kind of interesting seeing them handle. Norse wars are very, I mean, they're so, they're so dynamic. So it's really mm. interesting to see him kind of, you know, when you make a mistake, it's painful, essentially. Yeah. You yeah. can't mitigate it with, you know, ceasefire or just, you know, <laughs> sentinels or something like that. Don't make a mistake. That's the name of the game. No mistakes, baby. <laughs> that was, a, that was a nice series, man. Very interesting series. Very interesting Mediterranean. I know Medi people criticize Mediterranean saying, oh, it's so boring. It's so boring, this, that, and the other. But that was a very interesting Mediterranean game. Yeah, I mean, the only reason Mediterranean is boring is because there's only a couple of gods that get played, that get played, picked on it. That's why. You just, you just watch like 10 Mediterranean games of Hades versus Hades or Hades versus Zeus or Hades versus Poseidon and you go, this is, maybe you see an Aranos or Kronos here or there, but it's nice to see the other gods play on this map. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I, I can't tell you the last time I saw a Norse, or sorry, a Thormir on Mediterranean, man. Especially mm. not with early armory upgrades. Usually that's something that, you know, you'll see in a team game. Like I mentioned before, the burning pit, early burning pitch, something like that. Usually don't see anything like that in, especially not in a 1v1, especially, especially not in, in a tournament by all means. Yeah, it's, it's interesting to, if you just, if we go unpack it a little bit, it's like the difference in build order was one dock and two fishing ships for Nullis versus... Mm -hmm. Or three docks and, and two fishing ships for Nullis versus Mattress. He went two docks, armory, and and nine fishing ships. So there was no. What what should have happened here from from Nullis is he should have been one or two. Well, he should have been at least one longboat in front. But something went wrong in the build order for Nullis. He didn't have the extra dock up, so he couldn't spend those extra resources which allows the armory to come in and give Mattress that early advantage, I guess. Yeah. Well, so if you remember early on when we were talking about um, 
you know, the when you should actually get upgrades. Usually it's, you know, the numbers is usually what you want in AOM. The, you really need a big chunk yeah. of units in order for upgrades to actually make an impact. Having said all that, micro, especially on Mediterranean, micro makes a big difference as well with boat numbers. And, you know, you're talking about focus firing versus pullback micro, whatnot. It was kind of hard to tell who who was getting more kills um, in the early fight, so I wonder if that had a big... They seemed fairly equal on their numbers for a while. It was taking a while for that third dock to actually pay off for Nullis. I think he maybe mm. advanced a little bit too quickly in order to warrant the three early docks. Anyway, so I wonder if that impacted his numbers and then the micro, and the micro just maybe a little bit better for Matrius plus the armory upgrades. I don't know. Yeah, no, I, I just think that the, yeah, numbers-wise, if you go through the military account in the post-game, I think that'll tell some stories. Mattress was actually in front by a little bit at the very start for whatever reason. And he shouldn't have been because he built an armory and he built a, and he got an armory upgrade, but he was still, yeah. yeah. Sometimes I look at these, um, these this graph in it and it doesn't quite tell the truth though so i'm <laughs> you'd have to go back and watch the actual record again see exactly what's going on there yeah yeah, yeah of course <laughs>